All right, I've got kind of a more advanced example here of how we can use combo boxes in user forms. We have all the elements here. We have their symbol, their atomic number, the atomic mass, and we want to make a user form such that when we run this, it's uh, like an element finder. If I select from the drop down list, I can select an element, I can click go, and it gives me the symbol, atomic number, and atomic mass. So that's what we're going to be creating in this screencast. You should feel comfortable with being able to add these different elements here. I've again done this just to save time, but I've got a quit button. I've got an output field called atomic mass. This is named atomic number. This text box is named symbol. I've got a go button. And then I have added here, this is a combo box that I've added from down here. So let's go ahead and put in the code here. The quit button is the easy thing to do. We can just unload user form one. Let's go ahead and work on populating this combo box. Remember when you're using combo boxes, before you open up the user form in a module, you need to populate the combo box. So I'm gonna go, go ahead and insert a module and I've named it something like populate combo box. What we're going to do here on the spreadsheet is we're going to count the number of elements in A. We're going to start with two when we actually populate our list. We're going to be populating our combo box using the elements that are in column A. I'm going to declare N as a public variable and that's going to be an integer. That way N can be shared with the other subroutines that are used in the user form. We can use the count A function in Excel to count the items in column A. I forgot to dim I as an integer. That's going to be an index of iteration. And then we're going to bring in each element of column A, and we're going to make that an item in our combo box. So for each item in column A, I can use userform1.combobox1 add item range A and I. I is going from 2 to N because the first row is composed of labels. So we do that, we bring in all 114 elements in there into the combo box as new items. And then we want to make sure at the end that the default text is just the first item, which is hydrogen, and that's in range A2. I'm going to make a run form sub that's going to populate the combo boxes, and then it's going to open up or show user form 1. So let's go ahead and see if this works. I'm going to press F5. That brings up our element finder, and we see that in our drop down menu, we're going from hydrogen, that's the first element, all the way down to uh, this last one. So, right now, we've got this to work. We've populated the combo box, but now we need to code what goes behind the go button. When we click go, we want to extract the symbol, atomic number, and atomic mass uh, of that particular element. Now, when we press go, we're going to use the list index of the combo box one as sort of our uh, index that we can use in on the spreadsheet to obtain the symbol, atomic number, and atomic mass. So I can double click on the go button, and this is where the code is going to go for when the go button is clicked. The first thing we want to do is obtain an index, and that's the list index from that combo box. So I'm dimming index as integer, and then we obtain index using userform1.combobox1.listindex. So that's the list index that is returned when we press the button uh, that we had selected in that combo box. Now remember the list index starts with zero, so the first element has zero, the second element has one, and so on. The approach here then, once we know the index, for example, boron would have an index of, well, we're starting at hydrogen, so hydrogen is zero, one, two, three, four, so boron has an index of four, then we're going to use that in uh, a range here. And we're going to take the index plus one th row, and we're going to then take the uh, second column, third column, or fourth column, depending upon if we want to output the symbol, atomic number, or atomic mass. So I'm going to write for the first thing here, symbol. Remember, symbol on our user form is just this text box here. So that's what symbol is. So I'm going to write symbol equals, and I've written range A2 to D, and we're going to concatenate that with N. Remember N 
in our module we made n a public integer and n is the count we can use that in this private sub because we've made it public so we're looking at range a2 to dn and n is i don't know 114 115 we're looking that's going to be kind of our base object range a2 to d 115 or so then we're going to take cells of that so really we're only starting with the second row but then we have to take our index plus one because index starts at zero and then we're taking the column of that range symbol is in the second column I'm going to do the same type of thing for atomic number and atomic mass the only difference here now for atomic number we need column three for atomic mass this should be mass we need to export or extract the fourth column of our of this range so I think that we are all set up to go I'm going to put a button on the sheet we can assign that button to the run form subroutine and then when we click go it brings up our element finder let's just make sure hydrogen works so we extract then the symbol the atomic number and the atomic mass and let's do it for another element and when we do that we obtain the properties of that element so it looks like it's working just fine now I want to show you one more advanced feature instead of clicking the go button every time you wanted to uh, output the symbol when you change the element in this drop down menu you can double click on the code for the go button and I'm just gonna copy everything inside here and go I'm gonna go back to the user form and I'm gonna click on the combo box this is where whenever something is changed in that combo box combo box one change it's going to reevaluate what's inside of here. So now when I run my user form, if I reselect a item from the combo box, it's going to rerun all the code in that change subroutine and it automatically updates things. This kind of shows you another example of using drop-down menus in user forms. Thanks for watching.